What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets and Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get into Luis Castillo to the Mets, don't forget, guys, if you enjoy this video, please press the like button. And if you enjoy all my content, enjoy all my videos, want to get the notifications when I post my videos and when I go live, don't forget to hit on that subscribe button, guys, and you can get everything you need when I post my videos. All right, guys, so Luis Castillo to the New York Mets. Is it likely? Is it unlikely? Or is it possible? I will put it in the category of possible. The reason why I say that is because the Reds seem like they're willing to trade pitching. We talked about Sonny Gray. We talked about Eugenio Suarez. And I feel like the best option to get the most back in prospects and in players in a major league level is to trade Luis Castillo. Will the Reds do it? Could be a possibility. But when it comes to the Mets, they clearly struck out on Bauer. So they are looking to improve to a caliber pitcher like Luis Castillo. Now, you can argue that Luis Castillo is a better pitcher all around than Trevor Bauer. Obviously, cost a lot less. But at the end of the day, Luis Castillo was younger. And he has been better over the last four years of his major league career than Trevor Bauer. So, yes, you would have to give up a lot to get to acquire Luis Castillo. But the Mets need that pitcher. And $40 million to Trevor Bauer was clearly, clearly an indication that Sandy Alderson went out all out to get this pitcher. So why wouldn't he go all out prospect-wise to get Luis Castillo. Well, Luis Castillo can be one of the best pitchers in baseball. I think he seemed like he's getting better. His ERA over the last couple of years have gotten better. I think that he he's being wasted at Cincinnati. And on top of that, Cincinnati is looking like they want to trade pitchers. And it seems like Luis Castillo possibly can become a Met if Sandy Alderson uses the prospects he has in the system to acquire Luis Castillo. Obviously, it's going to be a lot of competition for Luis Castillo, but it really depends on what the Reds are looking for and what teams are willing to give up prospects to acquire Luis Castillo. Now, when it comes to Luis Castillo, the first thing you want to look at is his stats. And when we look at his stats over the last four years, because he's been in the league four years, in 20. 17, he had a 3-2 ERA, 89 innings, 98 strikeouts. Pretty good year. You know, for a rookie, very good. Coming in, he was 3-7, and seven, but the Reds weren't really that good, so we don't really want to go on wins and losses, as we know with the whole DeGrom, Cy Young will win when he went 10-10. and 10. So wins and losses is not that big of a deal to me. It's more of the ERA, innings pitch, and strikeout rate. In 2018, he had a 4-3 ERA, struggled a little bit, had 169 innings and 165 strikeouts, gave up 28 home runs, 49 uh, walks. ERA was high, but you know what? Second year in the league, the league caught up to him. They figured him out. ERA went up. Could happen, no doubt. But when you look at 2019, he was an all-star. 3-4 ERA. 190 innings, 22 home runs, 79 walks, and strikeouts was 226. He was an all-star. He was one of the best pitchers in baseball, especially in the National League. Obviously, no, uh, Jacob DeGrom won the Cy Young, but Luis Castillo was an all-star. He pitched well. He figured out the league. He figured out that the batters caught on to him, so he had to change things around, and that's what he did. And he got better. And that's what you want to see. And he was 26 years old at the time. And, and in 2020, he's 27. He was 4-6, and 3.21 ERA. He got even better. 70 innings, 89 strikeouts. Luis Castillo is a frontline starting pitcher. Obviously, the Mets have Jacob DeGrom. But it never hurts to have another big-time arm in the rotation. They clearly were trying for Trevor Bauer. You know, I don't believe Trevor Bauer was a big-time arm, but they were paying 
Sandy Olsen was paying him like he will be. So Luis Castillo can be a top-line starter in this Mets rotation. Is it going to cost a lot? Absolutely. Stick around. I'm going to show you a trade proposal that I think that the Mets and the Reds could agree upon. So stick around, but we're going to go right into the projection, projected numbers for Luis Castillo in 2021. So what are they? 11 and 10, 173 innings, 3.85 ERA with 197 strikeouts, 196 strikeouts. Now, you'll be like, oh, he digressed a little bit. He got a little worse with his ERA. True. But at the end of the day, there is no reason why he can't improve these numbers. There's no reason. You know, he'll have a better lineup. More runs will be scored for him. The pressure will be a little bit more off of him. Yes, he'll be in New York, but the pressure will be off of him, knowing that he'll get run support. Calm him down on the mound. He'll pitch better. And not knowing that he's not the ace of the staff, and Jacob DeGrom is, will take the pressure off of him big time instead of in Cincinnati when he is the guy. And that's the big deal about Luis Castillo. I think it's more of if he is not the guy, he will pitch much better. You could disagree with that, but that's what I think. Luis Castillo is a big-time arm, a big-time starter, and on a lot of teams, he would be the ace. But we're not looking for an ace, but that doesn't mean the Mets can't acquire him. It, that rotation will look amazing with Luis Castillo in the Mets rotation with Jacob deGrom, Luis Castillo, Cookie Carrasco, Marcus Stroman, and David Peterson. And – in May and June, when Senegal comes back, it'll even look even better. Luis Castillo, Castillo could be a Met and possibly could make this rotation one of the best rotations in baseball. Now, when it comes to his contract, what are we looking at? Well, this is why you're going to have to give up a lot to acquire Luis Castillo. Because in 2021, he was it was his first year of uh, being arbitration eligible, and he got $4.2 million. That's where he'd be getting in the 2021 season. And then in 2022 and 2023, he's, he's arbitration eligible for the second and third year. So that's why you have to give up a lot to acquire Luis Castillo. That's okay. I think the Mets should be willing to give up big-time prospects to acquire an arm like Luis Castillo. And in 2024, he would be a free agent. Now, the Mets can always acquire him and negotiate a contract with him on a team-friendly deal. It seems like a lot more teams are willing to give young arms that still have arbitration years left and buy them arbitration years left and sign them to a long-term deal. That could be a possibility too, especially if you're going to give up the prospects that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Luis Castillo is an option for the Mets and a big-time trade possibility Even when we talked about Sonny Gray and Eugenio Suarez, clearly the Reds are looking to trade players on their roster. The Mets are looking for pitching. There is no doubt about that. It seems like the Mets are not really heavily involved in Tyron Walker, Jake Odorizzi, and James Paxton. They even were looking at Jake Arrieta. In my opinion, why waste money on those type of pitchers, even though I do like Tyron Walker as an option for the Mets? If you're going to give him about $10 million for Tywin Walker for a two-year deal, so two years, $20 million, I think it would be better off just giving the prospects, getting one of the best pitchers in baseball, and definitely the best pitchers in the National League. He's young, he's controllable, he's cheap, and you can possibly extend him on a team-friendly deal and keep him even longer. He's young. He's only 28 years old. Luis Castillo is the person that I think the Mets could possibly go after, even though I think Sonny Gray and Eugenio Suarez could be an option as well. But I think Luis Castillo, as just him being acquired by the Mets, will cost us because young, controllable, and cheap. And when it comes to the trade that I would propose that I believe is fair for the Reds is this. The Mets would acquire, obviously, Luis Castillo. The Reds will get back Ronnie Mauricio, Matthew Allen, and Thomas Zipaki. Now, you could say, wow, you get two of the top, you get three of the top 10 pitchers in, uh, three of the top 10 players in the Mets prospect list. 
I understand that. You get number one. I think Matthew Allen was like number six. And Thomas Zipaki is like nine. But at the end of the day, you got to give to get. Right, guys? But Luis Castillo is worth that prospect pool. In my opinion, it's worth it. Ronnie Mauricio, if all indications are correct, he can possibly help this team, if not this year, maybe next year. But at the end of the day, there's really no place to play him. Yes, he might be filling out to play third base. But, you know, you got to think about it. He is a shortstop at this moment, and you still have J.D. Davis as the third baseman. So Ronnie Mauricio really doesn't have a spot because you also got Jeff McNeil at second base. Matthew Allen could be a big-time starting pitcher in, in the major leagues, but, at the, but right now I think showing Luis Castillo of what he's already done, he's been proven – we don't know what Matthew Allen will be. So I think it's worth that swap. And Thomas Zipucky is probably a reliever at this point. And he's not a hard thrower. And he is a left, you know, he is a good pitcher. But at the end of the day, he is a bullpen arm that we probably could, could give up. We will lose depth in the minors. But you know what? That takes a couple of years to get that. We did acquire three minor league pitchers when we traded Matt to Toronto. But I think this trade proposal is fair to the Reds and getting Luis Castillo in this Mets rotation would make this one of the best rotations in baseball. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, press that like button. If you want more videos, you want more content, you want to get notifications on when I post my videos and when I go live, hit that subscribe button, everybody. I want to thank you guys for watching. And as always, let's go Mets.